Dave. I wasn't done introducing you, and you were halfway out here. You gave me a false cue, Dave. No, no, I thought right. you were going to pull the trigger. All right, this is only a warning, but if it happens again, right. we'll have to deduct points. I've booked Barkley. <laughs> I've booked Barkley for next week on later. He'll get the full half hour. Can, oh, good. Congratulations on uh, your show. Tell us a little bit about the, the history of the show and about the special tomorrow. Highlights. Do you have highlights for us you can talk we, about? We have highlights. You know, the cross-section of guests. So Richard Lewis is yeah. on. You're on there a now couple was, of times. There was something and, uh, Richard Lewis was on one time and you couldn't r really show it. But can you see some of that now? Uh, yeah, the producers felt that I became too hysterical. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you don't want people to have too much fun on a television <laughs> oh, show. Yeah, so you right. can understand the producer's reasoning, and they wouldn't air it. <laughs> yeah. So Richard became uh, overcome by anxiety. He uh -huh. pleaded with us to air it, uh, and we did in two parts. We spoke to him a third time uh -huh. and kind of flipped back and forth. and Used it as reference the in together. the interview. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see funny. some of that tomorrow night on the you'll show. You'll see some of that, and then you'll see some of the more serious guests, some yeah. of the newsmakers. And, uh, you, you really get uh, heavyweight kind of guests. I've been surprised. You know, yeah. Mike Wallace and Ted Koppel have been guests, and uh, we've had four people who've run for president. Really? Which yeah. four? Uh, George McGovern, Gerald Ford, who both was president and lost uh, when he ran for president. Well, now, what uh, was Gerald Ford like? How's he doing? What's, what's he up to these days? Uh, Gerald apparently plays a whole lot of golf, yeah. Dave, uh, <laughs> as, as an ex-president should. I don't uh -huh. think uh, a man who's been the chief executive should exert himself uh, to any great extent in his mid-70s. Plays a lot of golf, yeah. serves on a lot of boards, and... Remembers a lot of he's, interesting he's, stories. He's enjoying himself then. Yeah. 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 Uh, and uh, now, w when uh, people used to talk to me about uh, doing this show, they would always say, well, who, who was your best guest? Or yeah. what's your happiest memory? And he, I, I never really had a, a good answer for that question. So how do you respond to that when people like me ask it of you? I say I don't have a good answer, and I try to move on. <laughs> yeah. uh, I got a kick, you know, being a broadcaster and a guy who, who grew up uh, following other people on television. To sit there and turn the tables on a Mike Wallace or a mm -hmm. Ted Koppel and have them respond as well as they did, that was, that was a thrill for me. Now, when you say you turned the tables on them, how did you do, were you confrontational or how did, how did that work? Not, not especially confrontational, but just to see them respond to the questions yeah. rather than ask them. And usually they're in fairly serious situations. You know, mm -hmm. Wallace is almost a prosecutor at times on the air right. and Koppel has to be the same on Nightline. And then to hear them talk about their childhood or some of their personal difficulties, uh, it humanized them in a way that I think the audience wouldn't ordinarily see if they just watched them perform yeah. their yeah, regular boy, job. You want to hear about difficulties? Have me on again. <laughs> um, and <laughs> and, and uh, disappointments. Now, this is another category that's really hard to answer because when you're doing a show like this, at the time, you're not really gauging it in terms of, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm disappointed. You're just trying to do the best job you can. But looking back on things now, have you had anything that uh, comes well, to mind in that area? We had Stephen Wright on. And I'm a well, huge fan man. of his. Really Academy funny Award guy, winner. Right? Sure. But he needs an audience. Mm -hmm. And our show is shot without an audience unless you count the, the cameramen. Oh, don't something. never count no. the cameramen. <laughs> and never. No. no. So no. you're talking about he'd fire off these lines, and other than me cackling like a fool, yeah. dead silence. And he's not going to break character and, and go into long stories. All yeah. of his answers are monosyllabic. So by actual count, in a 22-minute conversation, which is what a half-hour show breaks down to, I had to ask him, 87 questions. Oh, God. I, I'd say, what were you like as a kid? And he'd say, I was small and then progressively larger. Uh-huh. <laughs> eventually, I, I'm at a point of desperation. I'm just pulling stuff out of thin yeah. I, I, You know, Stephen, Forrest Sawyer, man or myth? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what, Ferrati and Teicher, classic romance or worthless pap? Just anything yeah. that occurred to me, and the guy was giving me nothing. Uh, and and now during a commercial, could you say to him, Stephen, this is great. We're all enjoying it, except for the cameramen. But can can you kind of help me out here a little, or do you just let it go? Uh, I pleaded, yeah. and it didn't work. And oddly enough, Dave, uh, like you, I had a less than fulfilling experience with Shirley MacLaine. Right. You know, my my thought was, if you know, if you can't have, you do an interview show. There are certain people historically you'd like to have on. If you can't have Winston Churchill. You could have someone who might have slept with him in another yeah. life. Yeah. <laughs> be a possibility. But, but it would just be in another life. Yeah. You couldn't verify oh, it. Oh, sure. But, you know, Shirley doesn't have much of a sense of humor about this stuff. Well, you know, it's been my experience that she, it's, it's uh, selective. She has a sense of humor about it when it will serve her best. When she doesn't want to have a sense of humor about it, in the case of my experience with her and apparently with you, she, she can become very kind of annoyed by it. And, yeah. Uh, of course, you and I would both prefer that sometime while you're on the air, it would serve her best. Yeah. Yeah. I would, <laughs> I, 
I never, I was never mad at her, but it was just, it became very clear very early that she had no interest in talking to me yeah. about uh, well, anything. At one point I said to her, how come, and I, and I don't claim to be an expert on all this new age stuff, but I said, how come everybody who believes in reincarnation sailed with Bluebeard, <laughs> they were Napoleon's yeah. wife, yeah. they roomed with Babe Ruth, how come nobody who believes in reincarnation says, yep, I've had 14 lives, and in every one I was a dishwasher in Albuquerque. Yeah, a shoe clerk at Fava. Right, yeah. exactly. <laughs> no, uh, yeah. no response from Shirley. Let me, let me uh, ask you about something that's been driving me nuts for the last uh, couple of months. The, uh, the basketball team for the Olympics was finally announced, finally yeah. selected. It's, it's all, I believe, NBA players, or They're are there have amateur one, players? One college guy. W one guy. Now, what did I miss along the line? Why did we decide that this was the way to, to handle our Olympic basketball obligation? We've lost the last five major international competitions. We've, so what? My sentiments, exactly. So what? Right. But it's, apparently it's some, people, competition. some people are annoyed by this because we invented the game. We used to dominate. Some of the Eastern European countries have caught up with us. It isn't that college players couldn't win the gold for us but they wouldn't be right, sure. Right. Now, we're sure. we'll be sure. All right, you give me an early round matchup. Yeah. I'll give you the score. I'm really looking forward, Dave, to that first round game between the United States and Tunisia. <laughs> 211 to eight. That's if the Tunisians are hot. Yeah, I uh, see, I don't get the point. All right, if we have lost and if we feel we were jobbed by the, uh, the Soviet bloc training and, and uh, attitude about uh, amateur athletics, all right, too bad, we'll just go back in four more years and we'll try it again. But this doesn't make any sense. Now, what about boxing? Are we going to get Mike Tyson to go back in there and have a run at the gold for us? I think he would represent the Olympic ideals. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Keep him out of the village. Keep him out of the Olympic village. What are we doing now? Oh. Biff's birthday, by the way. It's Biff's birth yeah, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Biff. Ah, uh, we're going to pause here for what are we going to Come on, we'll be right back. Are we back? Bob Costas is here, and uh, a little bit later we'll have um, Robin Hitchcock and the Egyptians. The Barbarians. And the, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see, uh, uh, oh, and uh, how did the thing go in Tokyo? Was it Tokyo or? Yeah, it was kind of like the a... The World uh, Championships track and field. Yeah, it's sort of a prelude to the Olympics, so yeah. it was good preparation for me, and then Carl Lewis broke the 100 meters right. record, and Mike Powell finally broke the record that Bob Beeman set in the long jump, which had stood since 1968. It was the longest standing record right. in track yeah. and, and field. And some people felt like, well, no, I guess here lately they thought it was an inevitability, but they thought it would be Carl Lewis who would break it, right? Yeah, because he had been inching up on it yeah. bit by bit, and then Powell just soared past it, even though Lewis himself came close uh, that same night. Yeah. Now, but Lewis did not break the record in placing second that night, did he? Uh, no, he came very close, very close. Yeah. But within an inch or so, but uh, how, how did Powell he take not uh, being the one to break the record? Was he, was he gracious uh, about it? or? I think it was a combination. Uh, he had had three straight jumps of about 29 feet, and he right. wanted to assert that he had had the best series of jumps in history, and he yeah. wanted to make that clear, and some people took that as being ungracious. But he went over to Powell and congratulated him, said it was a great mm -hmm. competition, said he was the best he'd ever jumped against, but I think he was drained by what he had put into the competition yeah. and disappointed. Pro probably so, but on the other hand, he did then, at the same event, reestablish himself as the world's fastest human. Yeah, so he ran the 100 meters in 9.86. Yeah. And he was here, uh, I guess, a couple of weeks later uh, on, on this show, and it was very, very nice. Yeah, fetching soda. Not, not fetching, please. No. <laughs> you you had him not, upstairs, no, I saw him. He was, he was bringing Sprite from the eighth soda. floor. No, he raced it down here. Yeah, that he did. We did not have him fetching anything. All right, he, he, he brought soda <laughs> yes. in an elegant and impressive fashion. Happily and willingly. Yes. Um, what a, you know what, my favorite event when I was a kid, they used to have a series of uh, international track meets, the United States and the Soviet Union, and it was Valerie Brumel and John Thomas in the high jump. High jump yeah. and, I, and I thought that this competition was as, as good and as exciting as you would see. What, where does the high jump stand these days? What, what is the record the anymore? The world record is an even eight feet. Uh, and it's, it's, that's amazing. Yeah, because I remember when they hadn't broken the seven-foot barrier. That's right. Was Seven eight. feet was, was a real, yeah. real, they thought that would stand forever. Javier Sotomayor of Cuba has jumped eight feet. And now, of course, uh, with 
the geopolitics changing, the Cubans will take part in the Olympics in 92, so we'll uh -huh. see him. And, and I guess the United States, do we have a shot at the, at the high jump? Yeah, we got a couple of guys who've come within uh, a couple of inches, 7, 10, or yeah. something like that. But that's why we should get the professional high jumpers back in the Olympics. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that high jumping circuit is big stuff yeah. here in the U.S. The guys Dave. who are out there making the huge money that's high right. jumping. <laughs> and, uh, and, and what about the, uh, the other real glamorous field event, the uh, pole vault? Where does that stand? That's, uh, that's 20 feet now, isn't uh, it? Uh, Sergei Bubka yeah. of the Soviet Union has gone over, over 20 feet. Yeah. And I understand they don't use bamboo poles anymore. Uh, no, Dave, no. That, 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 that they don't. Yeah. That they don't. Hey, how's Wilma, know, how's Wilma Rudolph look this year? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Olympics, when does that begin? That's here on NBC, right? That'll be here on NBC I never next, know what's on next NBC summer, anymore. Dave. Good for you. And nice to see you. Congratulations okay, on your big uh, third anniversary show. Bob Costas, kids.